Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, it's a cool winter day and it's a great day to stay inside and play cards and we're in the barracks at Historic Fort Wayne where the Historic Fort Wayne Coalition has welcomed us to shoot more episodes to share with you. We want to say thanks to them. Today, the game is Old Sledge or All Fours. When we did an introductory episode to games that soldiers played, we mentioned that this one isn't as common anymore but was very common amongst the soldiers. How is it played? Well, it can be played with two or four players. Today we're going to play with four, and that makes two teams. Chad and I are one team, and John and Huck are the other team. There's a term that we know regularly today, and that's the dealer. I'll deal the hand. Now, the person to the left of the dealer in Hoyle in 1864 is known as the eldest hand. If you're playing just two-handed, that person will be called the elder hand. So, and that's a person from the opposite team. We're going to deal six cards around, three at a time, and keep them face down. The 25th card will be turned up, and that is a possibility for Trump. Then we'll go ahead. The eldest hand will have a chance to choose whether he likes Trump or not, and we'll talk about that. Let's lay this out. Six cards to each player in two groups of three. The next card I turn up. Our game will be played to seven points. Hoyle mentions that they played usually either to five or seven. You can pick any number. Seven is most common. There are four ways that each team can score points towards the seven needed to win the game. They're scored in order, and the order is called the high, the low, the jack, and the game. Taken in order, when we look up, the person who at the end of play has the highest trump in their hand will score four high. The person who right now in their hand before turned up has the lowest trump will get the point for low. The jack goes to one of two persons. If it's in the hand, whoever has it at the end of play gets it. In our case, the jack of hearts is turned up. If we continue to play here, I will take the point as the dealer. Finally, the score for game is math done based on points in the hand at the end of play. Now, there are only five cards that we're looking for. When playing for tricks, you want to get aces, kings, queens, jacks, and tens into your hand. Hoyle mentions that this, the game, and he mentions in there, the winning of the knave, the making of tens, and the taking of your adversary's best cards constitute the science of the game. As we play the hand round, we want to go ahead and we want to get those face cards, aces, and tens to be ours at the end of play to score for game. Let's go ahead. Now, the dealer and the eldest hand pick up their cards and look at their cards and consider whether they want this heart to be Trump. It's actually the choice of the eldest hand. He can go ahead and decide whether he wants to play with hearts as Trump. Remember, he's looking to get face cards, aces, and tens into his hand here to score for game. We've turned up Trump. If it stays as the dealer, I'm going to get a point for the jack. Let's play. Okay. Okay, well the other two fellows have taken a break and we have a chance to talk about the concept of begging in all fours or old sledge. This works whether two-handed or four-handed. The reminder is I'm going to deal the hand and that is six cards to each player, three at a time. So I'm handing the elder hand six and myself six. I'm going to turn up an eight of diamonds. Diamonds could be trump. Now John is the elder hand, or if he were left of dealer and four-handed, the eldest hand picks up his cards and decides if he wants to play diamonds as trump. If he doesn't, he says, I beg. I beg. I have a choice. If I want to play diamonds as Trump, I can go ahead and tell John, take one, and they take a point for their team for the tour towards the seven to win in all fours. If not, which I don't, we'll turn that card down and I will deal him three more cards. If playing four-handed, deal each player three more cards turn up a new card. Well, how did that happen? We turned up a diamond. What do you do if you turn up the same thing as you just walked away from by begging? You turn that down and you hand each player another three cards. You can see how quickly this becomes a very large hand to play. But remember, if we're looking for high, low, there could be new high and low coming in. There also could be the knave going elsewhere. And of course, you have a lot more cards in the hand to figure out game. We've turned up a heart, the dealing for begging ends, and we're going to play this game of all fours with hearts as Trump. 
Now, I don't score the point for Jack. Remember, we score in order and high and low come first. We'll score all scoring at the end of play. John is the eldest hand leads. And gentlemen, you can pick up and look at your cards at this point. Remember, we'll go ahead and review again. The winning of the knave, the making of tens, and the taking of your adversary's best cards constitute the science of this game. The eldest hand leads. So a heart has been led, trump has been led, and the highest trump has been led. Chad needs to either follow suit or play off. If you have the suit led in your hand and you do not play it, it's called reneging and it will cost you a point if you're caught. Huck has played a three. I have to play a heart and John takes the hand. Having won the hand, John gets to lead the next hand again. All right, king of hearts, two of an ace. Now, scoring his points, Huck has decided to play an ace here, but this is safe because he knows that his partner is probably, since the ace, was, since the ace of hearts was already played, John will probably win the hand with the next highest trump. Huck is safe playing off with an ace because he knows his partner is going to get it in scoring for game. John continues to lead. All right. I didn't get any, I didn't keep any into my hand at this point, so I can go ahead and talk us through it. Now let's talk about scoring. High, low, jack, game. The high is whoever's going to hold the highest card, and we know that John holds the ace of trump. So John and Huck will take a first point. The low is the lowest card, and Huck pointed out he had the three of hearts coming out and we did not see the two coming out. John and Huck will take a point for the lowest. Now the jack, remember we said whoever holds the jack at the end of play will get the point unless it's turned up. As the dealer, we get the jack, and so Chad and I get a point here. Now let's talk. We mentioned that scoring. We said you want to keep tens, face cards, and aces. Let's review. The ace is worth four. The king is worth three. The queen is worth two. The jack is worth one and the 10 is worth 10 points. This is scoring within the hand to get one point for game. Huck and I seem to have nothing to contribute here, so let's take a look. Chad, if you'll pull yours to the side. John, if you want to lay yours out here center. So if we look at it, John will get 10 points for his 10, four each for two aces, three for a king, and two for a queen. John has 23 points. Chad, let's bring your cards out here. Three tens, 10 each for 30, four for the ace, 34, three for each king, 37, 40, two for a queen, 42, and for the jacks, one, 43, 44. 44 to what did you have, John? 23. So Chad has more than enough points. We will end the first round of play with the, um, Chad and myself taking two and John and Huck taking two. We played a seven. So that is old four old sledge. Deal passes. The eldest hand is now the dealer. The person next is now the eldest hand. We shuffle, deal again, and play using those four. Hope you've enjoyed this. Go ahead, give it a try. Find a deck of cards. It takes a simple deck of 52 cards. This is a way to find a better connection to something these fellas did to pass the hours, whether it's in a barracks like this, whether in it's, it's boring in camp in between duties waiting to march somewhere. This is a way to pass the time. It may be a way for you to pass the time as well. Thanks for spending your time with us at Civil War Digital Digest. We hope you've enjoyed. And do us a favor, check out what we're doing over on Patreon. The patrons there are making a huge difference towards this, and we just want to say thank you so much to them. Hope you had a great time with us, and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.